Melinda Santiago, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Thank you, John. Good to be here. It is a pleasure to be with you. I'm super excited to have this conversation. We tried this morning, things, you know, life happened. We had to push it back and, and reschedule for this afternoon. I'm thrilled that we're still able to have the chance to chat. And today we're going to be talking about personal and professional branding, generally speaking, but also specifically within the entertainment industry, as that's your area of specialty. And really, you know, we're going to explore what leaders can do not only for their own personal and professional branding, but in leading out and modeling for their people on their teams. Uh, how they can also do the same so that everyone can strive to fulfill their potential and prepare themselves for the next great opportunities that they might have. And that might be in their current organization, uh, part of the same team on new projects, but it might mean new opportunities with new organizations. And we should always be looking for those opportunities and preparing ourselves the best we can. So Melinda, you're going to be helping us unpack all of this and, and better understand how we can go about doing this. As we get started, I just wanted to share Melinda's bio with everybody. Melinda Santiago is a serial entrepreneur in the entertainment industry for over 25 years. She has consulted, managed, and branded several celebrity clients to new successes. Integrity and respect are her driving forces in this once male-dominated industry. She is the CEO of the Santiago Firm LLC, an entertainment firm, and also an umbrella for Santiago Productions. LLC, a film and television production company, where she is the president and executive producer. The newest division created under Santiago Firm Umbrella is S Firm Publishing. And I'll let you tell us a little bit more about that, Melinda, but is there anything else you would like to share with listeners by way of your background or personal context before we dive on in further? Yeah, um, I was in the corporate world for a long time, um, business development, um, department head of operations. So I have a lot of corporate background as well, um, navigating through teams, which kind of threw me into a, a space of entrepreneurship. Um, so there's a lot of corporate sides of me that I've learned along the way. Yeah, and being a serial entrepreneur is not for the faint of heart. And of course, really? knowing how to navigate in a corporate setting is, is really important. So you, you bring both of those uh, elements to the table. I think that's fantastic. Um, why don't you tell us just a little bit as we get started about your your various companies, the Santiago Firm, uh, Santiago Productions, and S Firm Publishing, why you got into those areas, what you're trying to accomplish with them, and then we can start to uh, zoom out a little bit and, and talk more generally about uh, how individuals can go about personal and professional branding. Perfect. Well, Santiago Firm LLC uh, started out pretty much, uh, I would just run into celebrities, athletes, very organically. I'd be out at a park or at a grocery store and conversations would strike up. And I'm a people person, I'm an extrovert. So, and sometimes I didn't know who these celebrities were. So it kind of made it more fun because they expected to be a, oh, and I'm like, okay, so who, what are you? And we just had these conversations. So that grew to build some very good, strong relationships. Uh, anytime they come to the city, they would call me, uh, hey, Melinda, I need to get something done. Can you kind of connect me with someone in your city? Or I'm about to go travel here. So I kind of became like the plug, like a concierge, like a, uh, hey, call Melinda, she'll get you whatever you need. So I kind of put them together and I would start creating different relationships outside of the norm with, you know, they would end up building businesses and building things outside it's because Melinda came, kind of came in a conduit of it. Uh, I was working corporate America and kind of doing this on the side, concierge and playing around with it. And I got fired from a job, which I've never been fired before. And that's when I realized, okay, I'm gonna step out on my own. And people were just constantly calling me, utilizing my conversations, advice. Melinda, what do you think? You know, well, let's try this. I'm super creative. So I started creating ideas and different branding opportunities for people. Um, I didn't charge them at the time because I just wanted to help friends. And then people were like, no, Melinda, you deserve this. So they just started paying me. And I'm like, no, oh, I can make this a job. <laughs> okay, great. You know, um, so then I got, I started getting a hold of uh, clients who just were calling me up and, hey, Melinda, I heard about you. I'd love to know a little bit more what, about what you do. Uh, then Organic conversations again started and became, all right, let's go ahead and put you on contract and let's see what we can make happen for you. And through their successes, people started noticing like, wow, 
how did you take this and make that with no money, just, you know, proper execution and relationships. And when people start following that, then they start to say, oh, you're a doer. Okay, we like doers. And uh, from that, I started kind of journaling into the uh, TV film side, because being in Atlanta, there's a lot of opportunity here. Uh, so I just started kind of just being on set, just kind of finding my way around, navigating around uh, locations and gripping and slating and however Melinda was needed. Hey, Melinda, can you grab the crafting table and can you go find us a caterer? So I became just a, how can I help? In the TV spot, even though I'm a CEO over here, I had to understand like I'm starting a new venture. So I got to start from the bottom and learn it all the way from the bottom. And people just liked the work ethic that I carried. And then I said, okay, TV film. So I started help uh, writing, executive producing, uh, started writing treatments for videos for clients and the concepts were really nice and they started getting picked up and noticed. So then I ran across a very good guy named Leon Cosby III who started following me on social media and he came in and honed in on me and said, I wanna be a part of the Melinda Santiago business, but I wanna see you evolve some more. What about book publishing? And I'm like, I don't know the first thing about book publishing. I like to write because I used to write in high school and English lit, that was my favorite subject, but I didn't know anything about the literary world. Uh, so he started kind of putting things to play for me and started creating that lane for our clients to now expand their brand even further in books. So then we started the S from Publishing Company and then I had to be the first kind of guinea pig and I wrote my own book through the pandemic and it's been doing really well and it's not to do how to, it's not to be a most effective CEO, it's a nonfiction, I mean, it's a fiction uh, romantic comedy that I wrote a script for Kevin Hart. Uh, so things are just evolving, right? But yeah, I'm yeah. step by step to see how everything kind of plays along with one another. So clients have different outlets to go amongst one entity. Um, so then basically now the goal is with the books, turning the books that we publish now into movies. So everything goes and filtered through the S, uh, Santiago production. So it's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of learning. It's been a lot of hiccups, but, um, it's navigating through this space. And the beautiful part about entrepreneurship is as long as you're effective and you work, I think with integrity, you can make anything kind of happen how you want to happen. And you don't have to kind of stay to the norm. I think that's the beautiful part about entrepreneurship. You kind of make it your own and be as inventive as you want, be as wild as you want. Somebody's going to relate to you. And when you tap into that relatability, that's when you can, okay, then how do you get to the next how do you get them to relate to you? What's, what's the common denominator now over here in the next form of group or something that you may not have or be in touch with? And then you start forming those relationships and it just grows and it's fun. It's fun when you really love what you do. Yeah, I, I really resonate a lot with what you're saying. Not that I'm in the, uh, the personal and professional branding business or in the entertainment industry at all, because I'm not, um, but the entrepreneurial spirit uh, is something that has always resonated with me. And, you know, I'm a, I'm an academic, I'm a professor. Um, that's, that's my, my day job and what I spend most of my time focusing on, but, you know, I've started my own uh, consulting firm. I, I started a magazine. I, I started a uh, publishing imprint um, and this podcast and other things like that, just as, as a means to disseminate because I do lots of research and I talk to lots of interesting people and I just want to be able to share with a, as big of an audience as possible, the types of things that I'm learning about through my own research or through my conversations, my consulting engagements, those sorts of things, and give others the opportunity to, to do the same. And, and so a lot of that, you know, it seems to, to, uh, overlap with the kind of things that you're talking about. And ultimately there's, there's no, there's no, um, substitute for just that entrepreneurial drive and spirit where you just kind of wake up in the morning excited about a new project or a new venture or something new you're going to try. You have no idea if it's going to work. You're building the plane while you fly it. You're learning a ton, but that is invigorating, isn't it? It can be. And it also can throw you under the covers and say, what the hell was I thinking? <laughs> you know, it can go two ways, but that's the beautiful part about it. It's supposed to go two ways. 
everything is not supposed to work. If that always worked, how do you learn? You know, and I think when people get out of their perfectionist way and just allow and say, you know what? I may not make the right mistake. I mean, I may not make the right decisions right now, but they're not wrong decisions. They were a decision that was needed to be made so I can move that out the way so I can get better focus or I can get a better direction or I can start moving stuff out of the way. So there's been plenty of days I've thrown the covers over my head and we're like, I'm not going to go back to work. <laughs> I'm just going to, I'm just going to, let me go dust off my resume and, and try to get yeah, back yeah. there. But the other part the exhilarating part that you spoke of, it is exactly that knowing that you can get up and create something. And if it works, it's like, I am smart or I am this and it's needed especially with social media the way it is now, it's a crime. It's a crime if we don't share. It's a crime if we don't try to make anyone that we can touch a little bit better or a little more comfortable or a little bit more happy. It's a crime if we don't take advantage of it. Yeah, I love, I love that framing. Uh, you know, there's so much a negativity around social media and, and certainly there's plenty of uh, perfectly uh, reasonable critiques, right? And we have to be careful with how it seeps into our lives. But you're right, we're so interconnected, and we have the chance to to positively influence. And I'm not just saying influence in terms of like being being that influencer, you know, the Instagram influencer, whatever, you know, there's a place for those sorts of things. But I'm just talking about, like you said, positive influences where you can share some light in your life with others and to give them a hand up, give them give them an opportunity, uh, share something that's useful to you, add value to the lives of those around you. And, and social media just provides a great avenue for that. Exactly. And, and that, you know, that connects back to, and I would suspect as we talk about personal and professional branding, you'll connect it back to what you just said, uh, because it's one thing to just be, you know, like a fashion influencer on Instagram. It's another thing to be, you know, a, a professional thought leader influencer, someone who's adding value to the lives of those around you. So let's, let's start to talk about that a little bit. What are some of the things that you do with clients? Uh, and how do you, how do you think about how we can better, uh, be, a, you know, practice personal and professional branding in this day and age of, you know, all these platforms. And it seems like every year or so there's a brand new one that takes off. How do we navigate all of that? How do we do it in a way that's authentic where, you know, I I'm an introvert. So, I, I want to be able to add value to the lives of those around me. And I want to have a strong personal and professional brand, but I also don't want to come across as though I'm just bragging all the time or that I'm just like, Hey, look at me. I'm so special. Or, you know, and certainly my life is, is complex and messy and there are good things and bad things and hard days and good days. And like, I don't want to portray like this, this uh, rose colored kind of version of a life that's certainly more messy than that. How, how do we navigate all of that um, so that we can share things that are of value to other people without, you know, getting stuck, you know, being worried about, you know, the self-promotional piece that, you know, people right. often are concerned about. Right. That's, that's a good question because we do get looked at as if we're trying to brag at times. And sometimes it's, no, I'm really just trying to tell you it can be done. So how I navigate through that piece is when I talk to my clients, I no longer talk at my clients. I talk to them and I have to find out. And it, it, it's a long process sometimes because you think a celebrity, oh, they just know it all, this and this and that. But then when you start to deep dive and you have real conversations with them before you execute plans and roll out campaigns. When you start to really navigate deeper inside a person's emotional state, it changes. You know, today they can be on top of the world, tomorrow they can be depressed. Um, and you can't successfully roll anything out based off of one emotion. So I try to deep dive into my client's fears. What are you afraid of? And the majority of those responses come back, I'm, feel, I'm, I'm afraid of failure because it's not just celebrities, it's just regular everyday people that I talk to that I try to impact as well. It's about what's the fit, what is the fear of failure? And it's, it's trying to get into a mindset and turning that mindset into a positive space. 
if you knew what on the other side of fear was glory, whatever glory looks like for you, success, reward, happiness, whatever that looks like for you, would you be fearful? And the answer was no, because I know. So is it the loss of control because you're not controlling it? Or is it that you truly are deathly afraid of failure? And why is failure looked at in a negative space? So that's how I kind of start talking with new clients and clients like, what are your fears? What, what, what scares you about success? What scares you about you? Uh, I find that my more humble, introverted people, you, you can't talk about yourself. You just don't know how to find the words because again, we come off as we're feeling like we're bragging. But if we're celebrating yourself, and I, I, I suffered from the same thing. I let other people speak on my behalf. I'm like, I'm, I'm just here. But sometimes you have to be okay with celebrating your wins. And the way we navigate through that is simply just putting out there, hey guys, help, help support this cause. I'm, it's all about how the words are used. You know, I am thankful and I am grateful to be a part of this academic. I'm grateful and thankful because now you're still positioning yourself in that accolade without coming across as you know, conceited or anal or pompous. You say, I'm just, I'm ecstatic. You know, it's been a long time. And I think what people love nowadays, especially with social media is the authenticity. People love to hear the stories because you just didn't show up one day and have a million dollars. No, the backstory was you were homeless 10 years ago and you just came up with a great idea and you were consistent with it. So it's the sharing part now that's important. It's the backstory sharing. And I think when people fall in love with you and your story, they become now more open. They become fans of yours, not your accolades. And I think that's the part when you get to a, hey, I just, I'm just thankful that you guys are here. I'm thankful for this interview. I'm thankful that every piece of this uh, plays a part in my everyday growth. And I don't know everything and I keep learning every day. And that's what I talk with my clients about. And that's where I get into a space of they feel good about the small wins. They no longer are scared. They can almost embrace the, the crazy stuff that happens to them. And I said, you have to be able to laugh at yourself. You have to be able to, oh my God, I totally screwed up that one. And, and have people join, the, join you in laughing at yourself. Yeah. Not laughing at you, but laughing with you. So it's really to me, to go back to the answer, I had to go in deep dive with an emotional connection first and having them tap into self. And once we figure out that part, I don't care about the bells and whistles. That will come when it's supposed to come and it will be given to you and however you need to be received. But emotionally, let's get you there so you're satisfied, you're not uncomfortable. And when you're, un not, when you're not uncomfortable, you're able to execute freer if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, part of it, I think, is imposter syndrome that a lot of people face. Um, yeah. So feeling like, do I really have anything to add? If, if I if I share this with other people, I'm going to be found out, people are going to realize that I don't know what I'm talking about, or whatever. And the, the wonderful thing about authenticity is not only is it more real, people resonate with it more, right. Um, but it also allows you to kind of sidestep imposter syndrome because you don't have to pretend like you don't have to pretend like you have it all figured out. You don't have to pretend like everything's roses all the time, unicorns and rainbows. Like everyone knows everyone's life is messy and everyone has ups and downs and just own it and be real. And, but still look for the value that you have to add. It's okay to admit that you're building the plane while you fly it. It's okay to, 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 lean into the iterations, right? Because yeah. that's just, that's what learning and growth is. And so if, if I just, you know, frame up, say an entrepreneurial endeavor or some new initiative, some new project, and I say, you know what, I don't really know what I'm doing, but I, I'm going to try this out. I'm going to experiment and some things are going to work and some things aren't. I'm going to learn and I'm going to grow and I'm going to share my learnings with other people in a way that hopefully will benefit them. And so they don't have to relearn to go through all the, the school of hard knocks the way I just did. And people will appreciate that. People will appreciate having, um, you know, that authentic 
uh, value add to their life in their desire to learn and grow themselves. And I, you know, there are so many things that I've tried over the last couple of years that I never would have done. I mean, I'm, I'm in that way, I'm thankful for the pandemic because it, it kind of caused me um, to do a bit of a mental reset and say, Hey, why, why not? Why can't I try some of these things? And you know what? Some of them have worked. Some of them haven't. Uh, I've learned a ton of things over the course of the last couple of years. Uh, and I still continue to do my academic stuff, my professor stuff, and those things are great. And I'm going to always do those. Um, but there's been other things that have helped to reinvigorate and re-enliven, you know, my life and what I'm doing in giving me the opportunity to add value to other people. And I don't need to be shy about that. Uh, I don't need to be, I, I shouldn't be an arrogant prick about it either. But if, if I'm genuinely trying to add value to those around me, uh, people largely will appreciate it. There will be some who will be jealous. There will be some who, uh, you know, will be off put by it. But, you, you know, you can't be all things to all people all the time. So pick your battles and, and then just try to add value. Yep. And I think too, even though I may know how to do something, but you're showing me another way to, that you did it. And then I could say, oh my God, I didn't even think I made it two steps harder or I can find laughter in our own mistakes. I'm like, oh my God, I did that same shit too. I did it too. I, I messed up. I realized I'm not a plumber. I thought I, I thought I watched my dad enough, you know, fix sinks. And I thought- uh, I, I have too, I have too many- stories where I tried to be a plumber and I know I'm not and and you know yeah. horrible things happened. <laughs> I think that's what that's the beautiful part of us being able to share. It's the stories. It's the oh my God, I did that too. Now we're brother and sister. Now we're, you know, now we're confidants because we're sharing those same crazy experiences in our failures, right? Or I think it's the comedy aspect of it. I mean, I like I what I do know is people are voyeurs. They can know everything all day long, but they're still watching other people and may not be for any kind of value. It may just be for the comedy effect. It could be just because I made their life feel a little bit better because my life was a little bit worse, <laughs> you know? And that's the beautiful part about sharing and, and developing. So with my clients, I always tell them, how are we reacting and how are we engaging with your fans? I understand your level is right here. It doesn't mean you can only talk to your level here. Let's talk to the people about how to get them to where you feel. And, and it's not about being at the level, it's the feeling of whatever level they're at, but it's encompassing that good feeling. So that's all a part of branding because you'll see someone who's, who is, how can I say it, robotic, and then you can see the person who is saying the very same thing, but feel it because they know or they don't know. And they say, you know what? I don't know what this water tastes like, but I'm going to taste it real quick and throw it out. Like, that's just not for me. Too much alkaline. Who knows? But that could be funny to this person. This person doesn't resonate with. And like you said, we are not going to be everything for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. And, and maybe the last thing just to note before we wrap up for today uh, and that is, you know, it's important for all of us to take ownership over our own career development. It, ideally, we will work for organizations uh, that that will invest in us and try to prepare us for the next steps, for the next opportunities. Or if we're running our own organizations, hopefully we are creating that kind of an atmosphere for our people, but we can't necessarily expect that. So like I I need to own my own personal and professional branding. I need to own my own career trajectory, my own opportunities. And I can't outsource that. I can't expect anyone else to do it for me, even though it would make sense for organizations to help their people with it. Uh, it's not always going to happen. So with that said as a caveat, I need to own it. Uh, now think as leaders, think about what you can do to help your people on your team first model for them what personal and professional branding looks like and how they can do it effectively and how they can leverage it so they are prepared for future opportunities. And then, you know, help them through your coaching sessions, mentoring, through one-on-ones and performance conversations. And all of those are opportunities for you to hit home with your people, the importance for them to be looking for their next step in their career. Uh, and I think a lot of leaders are hesitant to do that because especially right now, you know, it's hard to find good people. And why would I try to encourage my, my team to like 
leave. to to leave, right? <laughs> to, to 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 fly out of the nest. And you know what? If you don't do that, you know what's going to happen? You're going to end up stuck with a whole bunch of people who once were great and over time have become disengaged and don't really care as much. And they're still going to leave, but but it's going to be under worse circumstances. The reality is people leave. People come, they go. People have messy lives. And for a thousand reasons, people might choose to leave. So right. it's it's so much better to just show your people that you care about them, that you're going to invest in them, that you want them to be successful. It's not to, you're not communicating to them, I want you to leave. It's just that I value you. I know you have so much potential. I want to help you uh leverage that potential. And if that means you can stay with us and do it, wonderful. And if that means you have to leave to do it somewhere else, I'm going to do everything I can to help you get there. And if we can share that message with people, I, you know, they're going to be energized, they're going to be engaged, they're going to be committed. And the irony is they're probably more likely to stay in that environment than the other way around. And the, the funny part about it, here goes that fear. You know, you said, if I allow them to spread their wings, they're going to leave me. Well, the actual opposite happens. You know, I put people in position and I put people in, in just environments that they can learn and, and create and spread their wings. And we kind of just dive in to see what their love is. All right, now not, let's take that love and manifest it into monetization, right? How can we take that love and turn it into something that you can make money from? And I found that those that I've done that with they've went on to write, I've taken at-home moms off of Twitter that didn't know have any direction for their life and I had them work with me and then they ended up being writers for food magazines because they liked wine and stuff. They, so I, I got them over into writing for magazines. Um, I've gotten people from being afraid to be in front of a camera to starting their own podcasts. You know, and for me, it's, they never left me, they're still here. But now the beautiful part is, I, they've been positioned out there. So now if I need the extra help, the first person that they're going to lean back to and say, Hey, is Melinda. Melinda, what do you need? And that's the beautiful part of it because it's really the opposite effect of what people think. And you are an effective leader never keeps a caged bird. They just never do. An effective leader teaches and pushes on go leads push on because their circle of life comes back. The next person goes up and needs somebody, guess what they're gonna do? They're gonna refer a new person to me that emulates yep. them and I'm gonna continue to teach and move. And next thing I know, I have a, a, a soldier. I have an army that's for me because I looked at that and I'm like, wow, I've helped all you guys go and I'm so proud of you. I think that's the beautiful part of being a leader. It's being unselfish, but being selfless. Yeah. And the irony again is when you're selfless, you tend to have better outcomes for yourself. <laughs> and so if, if the, the best, the best surefire way for you to look good as a leader is to not focus on yourself, focus on the people around you and invest in them and it will come back in spades. And it's, it's all about abundance versus scarcity. It's all about growth versus fixed mindset. If we can have that abundance and growth kind of mentality and, and really infuse that in our team uh, yeah. and help everyone to just, lean into their, their most, uh, greatest potential, then uh, great outcomes for everyone all the way around. Absolutely. Well, when I was in the corporate world, the team set for me, cause I did a lot of team building exercises. I put introverts in one quarter, extroverts in another cor corner. I put passive and, and aggressives, and I taught them how to interact with one another to really create a good team. Passives don't like aggressives, introverts, I have a problem with extroverts. Well, they're just too impatient. They're just always talking, they're this and that. So we had to find that middle ground. So with the teams that I used to build in the corporate world, which I have expand more out here in the entrepreneur world, but in corporate, I would have them lean on each other. And then once they understood each other, boy, that work day went by so much faster and so much easier. And they enjoyed coming into work to a point where we were open on holidays all my staff, everybody, all the other staff would try to go home. My staff was showing up because I had to stay. They would all show up and work with me until everything got done. And my superiors were like, How, what are you doing? Are you paying them more? I'm like, no, they just enjoy coming to work for someone who actually cares about them. Yeah, and yeah. that is what's important.
It is. It is. Melinda, this has just been such a fun conversation. There's been a lot that we've explored together today. Um, before we wrap up though, for today, I wanted to give you a chance to share with listeners how they can connect with you, find out more about your work, your team, and then give us the final word on the topic for today. Perfect. Well, Melinda Santiago across the board, I believe my name is important. <laughs> the branding, right? So Santiago firm, if you use Instagram, you can hashtag S firm but everything across the board is at Melinda Santiago. Email is info at the Santiago firm. If you're interested in writing a book, info at sfirmpublishing.com. Um, I wrote a book myself, so I'm gonna have to do a shameless plug right here because right, that's the branding part of it. Till Death Do Us Unpart. It's a really good read. It's an easy read. It's in hardback, physical, and E. I'm getting ready to do audio. But um, it's on Amazon, Walmart, everywhere books are sold. And you know, tonight, I just want to say like, thank you, because again, these team buildings, I've made a new friend with you, John. I love the fact that you are a professor. I love the fact that you're getting out there as an introvert to do podcasts. I, I believe in you. And the word for today is for me, efficiency, execution, and love. I, I love. Love. Wonderful. I love it. Melinda, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. I encourage listeners to reach out, get connected, find out more about what Melinda and her team can do for you. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week.